एक मिनट بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أما بعد dear brothers and sisters I welcome you on behalf of Center for Peace and Global Studies to our thirteenth lecture this is our online monthly lecture series we welcome you to its thirteenth session today our guest speaker is Professor Dr Junaid Nadbi I will introduce him in a while so we start our session with the recitation from the Holy Quran. Uh, I would like to request uh, Brother Hafiz uh, Abdul Rahman to recite few verses from the Holy Quran. Ji, Brother Hafiz Abdul Rahman. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب المشرقين ورب المغربين فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبا موج البحرين يلتقيان بينهما برزخ لا يبغيان فبأي آلاء ربكما يخرج منهما اللؤلؤ والمرجان فبأي آلاء Sadaq Allah al-Azim. I think we lost connection with the brother. Thank you very much, Brother Hafiz Abdul Rahman, for reciting a few verses from the Holy Quran. Jazakumullah khair. Dear brothers and sisters, as all of you know, this is our monthly activity. We invite different scholars for discussion and sharing their views on different topics. Today, we have requested a scholar for uh, discussion and to deliver his lecture on uh, human resource management from an Islamic perspective. So let me introduce uh, our scholar of uh, today's session, uh, Dr. Muhammad Junaid Nadvi. Uh, he holds the PhD from University of Wales, United Kingdom. Uh, he is currently uh, serving at Rifa International University here in Islamabad, Pakistan. Uh, previously, he had served in different education institutions uh, in Pakistan and abroad. He has been uh, teaching at uh, Ifat University, Jeddah, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, he taught at University of Management and Technology, Lahore. Uh, he has served for a very long uh, time for at International Islamic University, Islamabad, including uh, Dawa Academy, uh, Faisal Masjid. Uh, uh, he has uh, served at Faculty of Health Sciences, uh, Ministry of Health Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, he is uh, approved PhD supervisor of uh, Higher Education Commission of Pakistan. Uh, he, uh, along with lectures and other DAO activities, uh, he has a lot of contribution uh, in the academic field. He has contributed 104 articles in English and Urdu languages, 12 books, reviews, uh, two, uh, five research and eight books, and he has supervised and evaluated 72 dissertation and thesis. 
his main area of interest is ethics and Islamic social sciences, uh, especially examine, examining the way religious tradition encounter modernity in generating new conceptions of history, culture, and ethics. So we are honored to have Professor Najbi today uh, here among us. Uh, he accepted our invitation and uh, we welcome him and I would like to request him please uh, Raksar, to start your presentation. Jazakumullah khair. Jazakumullah khair. Uh, please kindly share my, my slides please. Uh, yes, in sh I am sharing. Uh, uh, I missed to welcome all the participants from uh, different parts of the world. I welcome you all. Uh, I can see many brothers joining us from different countries of Africa and Southeast Asia. So uh, welcome all of you. And if you uh, want to invite uh, your other friends, so you can share the link with them. Uh, let me share the presentation. Uh, it's visible yeah it is yes please make it a more more visible and broader please it's better now no still i it, you have to make it more wider full full screen if possible uh, from my side i made it full screen it's not full there no no it's it's half okay let me do it again Now it's better. Yeah, better. It's good. Now. Okay. Yes, please. Audhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam wa la rasulahi al-ameen. I first of all would like to thank uh, Professor Ehsan Malik, uh, Professor Muhammad Shahid Rafi, and other uh, colleagues from this institution for asking me to come and deliver this lecture. It is an opportunity to see all the brothers and sisters from all over the world. And uh, uh, I thank all of you who are have joined and who will be joining this session after a while. Now I will start my presentation with uh, your kind permission. Uh, we will also have a question answer session at the end. Uh, so if there is anything which you would like to elaborate me, Please note down and put it uh, after the my lecture or after my discussion. Now, please, slide number one, please. The title of today's lecture or this presentation is Human Resource Management from an Islamic Perspective. Next, please. The outline of the this talk of this, of this seminar is Number one, a brief introduction. Then we will take a look on the concept of human resource management, which I have given the title in brackets, HRM. And then we will also see the perception or the understanding of the contemporary human resource management, which I have given the title or abbreviation as CHRM. The next we will see the Islamic perception, perception or the perspective or the viewpoint of human resource management that is called IHRM. Then next we will see, or we will try to understand the Islamic foundation of human resource management. Next, after that we will see, or we will analyze the contemporary human resource management. And then we will uh, elaborate or discuss that is there a need for Islamization of the contemporary human resource management in this section, we will discuss this need of Islamization. And in the next session, after that, we will discuss the, how can we adopt the strategy, that is, how can we Islamize the contemporary or modern Islamic, uh, for the human resource management to an Islamic, from an Islamic perspective, which means the Islamization strategy of human resource management. Next, please. Now, first of all, I would like to give you a brief idea about the introduction. 
the introduction of the philosophy of the Islamic human resource management and conventional human resource management is totally different. They are not in contrast with each other. For example, the philosophy, which we will, I will talk in detail in the coming slides, the philosophy of Islamic resource, human resource management is totally based on metaphysics or is based on metaphysical phenomena. And the philosophy or the concept or the belief, philosophy means concept, belief, and ideology or thought. So there are many uh, different names for philosophy. But the philosophy is the more, most common now uh, name which we use. So the philosophy of the conventional or the contemporary human resource management is totally based on the denial of the metaphysical phenomena, which means they only talk about this world and only of this world. But in contrast to this, the philosophy of the Islamic human resource management is totally based on the metaphysical phenomena, which is based on belief and ethics and the belief in, in many things, which we will discuss in the coming slides. Now, the deficiency of the contemporary human resource management is that this contemporary human resource management has failed, has not been able to provide the spiritual social, economic, and moral awakening in the man of today. In other words, they are trying to do what they can to enhance the human resource management from the contemporary or the modern or the materialistic point of view. The next point is the, of the deficiency is the, today what the humanity needs is, today if we take a look in, in, with a with the with the unbiased perspective, today the humankind or the humanity is desperately in search of a paradigm that leads to peace and salvation. Which means that today the human kind or the human world or the humans of today's world are having many of the problems which start from the religious, social, economic, and political, and and especially in. Today's topic from the human resource management, the humanity needs a paradigm or an outline to lead the human uh, resource management or the human resources, which are one of the important uh, wealth of this world, uh, apart from other wealth, uh, which is mineral and social, economic, and many types of wealth are there. But we are talking about the human resource management or the human resource, which is a wealth for this world to generate economic activity. Now there's another, there's a need with the last point is that there's a the need. What I think is that there's a need or a new approach or a new definition and a new strategy for defining of human resource management from an Islamic perspective. Next please. Now, we'll take a little while to understand from the contemporary point of view, from the secular point of view, or the contemporary means the modern perspective of human resource management, which I have given the abbreviation HRM. Now, what is HRM or human resource management? It is a blend of natural and acquired skills means the, the, the qualities which are naturally embedded in the human mind or human body or human self is called the natural and the acquired skills. What the humans acquire or they learn from different sources is a blend, is a mixture. Human resource management is a blend and of natural and acquired skills and the knowledge which enhances a worker's earning power in the labor market. The knowledge by which he can make money in the market and to be beneficial for the society, for the organization, or any other kind of economic activity. The art of using the human resource for achieving positive results is recognized as management science. The art, I'm repeating again, the art of using the technique, the art of using the human resource for achieving positive results 
is recognized as management science. Next point is human resource management is just a management science. Human resource management is not a manage, just a management science, but in reality, it is a social science. How can this be? The answer is here because all the branches of social sciences, for example, that is anthropology, sociology, psychology, economics, political science, and history are involved in, in the decision making or in the science of human resource management. I will give you the examples when you will put me some questions or in between the lecture when we will go, when we will continue. Because if I start giving the examples, we don't have time for all this and we will lose the time. Uh, and so, but very briefly, management science, in my humble view, is a social science. Because if in management science, when you, for example, want to take any kind of a decision, you will have all these branches of social sciences are, are involved. For example, anthropology. Anthropology means, in briefly, means the science of man. All the human mind and the, all those things which are related to the human being, man is, is the field or the domain of anthropology or the human science. The second branch of science, which is very familiar and well known, is sociology. The social habits, all those things which come in sociology are also the part of management science. The third is psychology. To make any kind of a human resource management or decision, psychology is also an important part or it plays a very important role. Same is the case of economics. If you don't have economics or the economic activity, and if you don't have money or the material gain or the material wealth in your hand, you cannot make any kind of human resource management. So that means economics is also the part of the science of human resource management, which in my humble view is the part of social science. The next is the political science, which is very, very, very important to make the human resource management or the science of management. You cannot achieve any kind of a human resource management until and unless you have the, the right or you have the, the power of making any political decision. So the political decision made are controlled by which are controlled by the government or the people are also controlling the human resource management because the policies which are being inducted in the political system are directly going to affect the human resource management when it comes to the implications or the application. The next is the, and the last, not the least, but is last is history. To understand or to, to implement as a human resource manager or a, or a, or a management, management science or the management committee, history is very important. You cannot take any decision in human resource management if you do not know the history of the people, of the society, or the psychology of the people, or the economic situation of the people, or the political situation of the people of any country or in a nation or a tribe. So history of the past nations is very, very much important in order to make a decision or to make a policy for human resource management. Next, please. Now we will say in this slide, we are going to analyze and we are going to understand, we will try to understand the role of religion in human resource management. As I said earlier, that in my humble view, I consider human resource management as a very small part of, or a branch of social sciences. Now in this slide, we will, see or in this presentation, we will see what is the role of religion in human resource man management as a social science. First of all, human resource science or human resource management is, is, is based on religion and beliefs. And this and the next is the, the, the branches is moral principles, moral values and human behavior. Let me give you a small brief uh, tip here and then we will read, I will read for you. You see, until and unless without a religion or without a religious belief, you cannot have anything by the name of human resource management. It may be very strange for you that I'm talking about religion and beliefs. I will give you a small example at this point 
that those people who do not believe any religion, they also, in my humble view, they are they also have a belief. It may be non-religious, but they also have a belief. Those who do not believe any, in any religion, they are have they are, are secular people. So secularism in is also, in my humble view, is also a kind of a belief or a religion. So to understand the the this thing, this thing is very important that see this in this perspective as I want to explain to you. Take the example of religion or religious beliefs. Religion, religion or religious beliefs produce number one, moral principles. These moral principles which are based or which are created by the religious beliefs or religious thoughts or religious ideologies, they, when they are created, these principles, they create human values or the moral values or the ethical values. And these ethical values create or control the human behavior. And what is the human behavior? It may be religious, social, economic, and political. At this point, in the I have written only the social, economic, and political. Why? Because we are concerned in this slide or in this lecture with the human resource management. So we will discuss only in this block social, economic, and political. Now let me repeat what I've said. It is the religion which creates principles. And these principles, they create values. And these values create human behavior. Now, in other words, again, the religion or the beliefs, religious beliefs, they are creating the moral or ethical principles. And these moral principles are creating human or moral values or ethical values or etiquettes. Now, both of these things, moral principles and moral values, they cannot be seen by the five senses. Let me repeat this again. Religion which creates the moral principles and moral values, they, can, they cannot be seen, they cannot be judged, they cannot be understood, they cannot be seen or under, understood by the five senses. Now, what? how can we know this? The, the religious beliefs or these moral principles and do, these moral values they will control the human behavior. It will be the human behavior which will show the moral values and the moral principles or the religious beliefs of a personality, of a person, of a nation, of a society. So moral principles and moral values, they are the controlling authority of the human behavior. It is the only thing, the human behavior, which can be seen by the five senses and which also reflect the religion and also the social science of human resource management. Now I will read what I have explained to all of you. Bullet number one, religion is a system of beliefs and practices by which a group of people interpret and respond to what they feel is supernatural and sacred. This definition emphasizes the social and corporate nature of religion and distinguishes religion from secular concepts, which are also concerned with important values. Next bullet is, religion is concerned with much more than just a moral behavior. I'll repeat again, religion is concerned with much more than a just a moral behavior. It encourages individual to rise above self-centered interests and involve oneself with the needs of others. The example which I have given here is the example of Joseph Raphael, who is an entrepreneur and a very famous uh, person in the field of human resource management. If you, in the question answer session, if you will like, I could give you the example. Uh, what is the, the behavior of this man? How, what kind of human behavior he is showing from the religious, social, economic, and political perspective of human resource management. Next slide, please. Now, in this slide, or in this presentation, I'll give you a brief comparison of the contemporary human resource management and Islamic human resource management, CHRM and IHRM. 
what, what is the philosophy? As I have explained earlier, this slide will elaborate more and make, make it more easier for all the brothers and sisters to understand. CHRM means contemporary human resource management owns a philosophy and perception which is based on secularism. It considers man completely free in his thought and action and regards this worldly life alone to be the sole target. It is the material gain only and alone which counts in contemporary human resource management. Next point of the bullet is contemporary human resource management disregards. Disregards has no respect or regard. Disregards the soul, means the spirit and its real needs, the spiritual satisfaction and gives inclusive attention and gives inclusive attention to the human body and its materialistic needs or demands. Next, moral values which prove to be a barrier in the realization of worldly objectives are either rejected or regarded as a changing subject with the need of time in contemporary human resource management, which means that it keeps on changing. In contemporary human resource man management, what we have seen in the history, even today, yesterday, tomorrow, what is happening in our country, all over the world, the contemporary, the rules and regulations are contemporarily being changed or being, being, are being proposed to be changed in the contemporary. This is the philosophy which they have in contemporary human resource management. Now, the next point is, what is the situation of Islamic human resource management or the philosophy? Islamic human resource management owns a philosophy and perception which is totally based on revolution. Is totally based on revolution, means wahi. Next bullet is uh, Islamic human resource management, IHRM, holds a twofold philosophy which, we, uh, which considers man's life on this planet as an organic whole, as an organ, organic whole that it does not separate man from the twofold, from dunya and akhira. So it is an organic whole in which cannot be divided into several partitions or compartments. It does not bifurcate. Bifurcate means to separate. It does not bifurcate man's life of this world and the hereafter. Now, I have given this reference or what I have quoted here, we, I have taken from Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 200 and 201. And one. Now, I'll read for you. I'll, I'll make you remind, remind you uh, in 201 and 202. All of you know this. Uh, I'll read just a few small things to give you what, what is the meaning of this. That uh, And those who ask our Lord, give us in this world and they shall have nothing in the resting place in the hereafter. And the next 201, the verse, verse of Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah says, وَمِّنْ هُمْ مَنْ يَقُولْ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنِيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقْنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ And there are some people and there are those who say, O oh, our Lord, grant us good in this world and the good of the hereafter and save us from the chastisement of the or the punishment of the fire of, of the hereafter. So this is the philosophy of Islamic human resource man, man management, which is revealed, which is cannot be changed, which is totally based on the philosophy of, of two things, twofold philosophy of Islamic human resource management. So this is the fundamental difference between contemporary and human resource management and Islamic human resource management. Next, please. Now, very briefly, and we'll see the, the, the fundamentals, what are the basics or the fundamentals of Islamic human resource management, that is IHRM. Number one, we all know and we are familiar, for those who are familiar with Islam, 
Number one is Iman, called faith or belief, as I've explained previous in the previous uh, slides, which is comprised of three important components, which all of us know very well, Tawheed, Risala, and Akhirah. Tawheed means the unity of, of one God, of unity of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the point which I want to elaborate here very briefly and humbly is that the word Tawheed means to believe in the unity of one God means to believe Allah in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all the attributes to understand the true concept of Tawheed. One should understand the, all the, the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to know who is he, what are his attributes and how does he controls this world? So all this, these things should be in the knowledge of Tawheed and we should be a part of Iman. A Muslim or a Muslimah should be aware of this. The next part is the Risala or the prophet of, prophethood of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or peace be upon him. To understand the Islamic human resource management, we cannot understand until and unless we have a true belief in the Risala or the prophecy of Muhammad and, and the history of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his lifetime and why, why, how he has been, been controlling the people and the human resource management in his lifetime. So it also needs a lot of knowledge of the Sira and Nabawiya. The next is the Akhira. The whole of Quran in every page talks about the life after death and what will happen and what are, are going to be the consequences of the next life. So the third important step or the point or the fundamental basis or the base of Islamic human resource management is Iman. I'll repeat again, is Tawheed, Risala and Akhira. If this, these fundamentals are not present in Islamic human resource management, it is nothing to do with the manage, human resource management. It will be simply contemporary human resource management. The next important point is, is the Sharia or Islamic law. Sharia and Islamic law means the laws which are derived from Quran and Sunnah. Number one, the basic or the primary. And the secondary, the sources which are being extracted by the Islamic scholars to for the religious, social, economic, and political system of Islam are known as Islamic Sharia. Each and everything has been clarified by the Islamic scholars and they have been approved by all the Muslim world and the Muslim scholars. This is called in an abbreviation known, known as Sharia. And this, this word has been taken, Sharia has been taken from the Holy Quran. From Shara alakum ma wasa bihi Ibrahim. So this is the word Sharia comes from Quran. The next fundamental of Islamic human resource management is Khilafah. This may be a new thing for the people in this session, or uh, for some of you, it will be be familiar for some. But this is something which has been forgotten by the Muslim world or the Muslim Ummah, and that is the concept of the Khilafah or the Caliphate or the vicegerency of, 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 of the caliphate of man. I'll give you a small example to elaborate the position of man in this universe by the word using Khilafah. Khilafah or the vicegerency means, or the caliphate means in the simple English word, the governorship or the governor. The, this man has been chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran as the governor of this world. Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. Now, I'll give you a very small example uh, of a country as uh, that in a country, there are many in a nation or in a country, we can take the example of Pakistan. Pakistan has four, five uh, uh, governors. The, it has five provinces. The Islamic Republic of Pakistan uh, comprises or composed or is, it has five provinces. These five provinces have been have five governors and these five governors are controlled by the president of this country of Islamic Republic of Pakistan. So there are certain liabilities or certain responsibilities which are given to these five governors. They are, there's a circle or there's a demarcation of their hudud or their demarcation of their responsibilities to, to govern the, the four provinces in this country. The same is the case, we can take this example of the governorship of these 
four provinces or the five provinces of Pakistan. Same is the case or the example of the man, male and female on this universe. We are the governors on this universe of the king of this universe of this world that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are the caliphate, we are the vicegerent and we are the, the khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to go through the rules and regulations which are mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran and by his holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the concept of khilafa which we have to, to learn again to, in order to, to bring the Islamic the concept of Islamic human resource management in application. The next point is the fundamental of Islamic human resource management is akhlaq, which I have already explained in the previous lecture, uh, previous slides, and that is morality and ethics. If we don't have the ethical moral values inculcated or embodied in the Islamic human resource management, there is no concept we cannot talk about Islamic human resource management. Next, please. Now, there are very briefly, we don't have time to discuss all. These, are, these small bullets or these points are just an example of the moral or the ethics of Islamic human resource management. And I'll give you a brief read and maybe if I need, uh, we can talk. The morals of Islamic human resource management very briefly can be understood. The attitude of the Muslims towards the non-Muslim in human resource management. In human resource management, we come across the non-Muslims from all other religions. What should be the, the behavior or the attitude of the Muslim? This is the part of Islamic human resource management in the light of the ethics or the moral principles which are given we have discussed already in the previous slides in given in the light of Quran and Sunnah. The second is the communal etiquettes. What are the etiquettes or the manners or the akhlaq of the community? In whichever community we are, where, wherever we are in this world, we have certain communal etiquettes. If we are living in a Muslim society, there will be a different approach or etiquettes while dealing with the Muslims. But if we are living or working in, a, in, the, in the environment of human resource management, if, for example, if I am a human resource management manager of, in a, of a European country or a European nation or a European city or a European management, I will have to be very be, be, be delicate or very, very wise in taking my, 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 my decisions in human resource management if I am dealing with a community of the non-Muslims or have people of different religions. Another example is that we should have compassion. Compassion means to be good with the people in Islamic human resource management. This is also one of the moral values of Islamic human resource management. The next is cooperation. Cooperation is also the fundamental, one of the fundamental morals or the, the ethics of Islamic human resource management. Quran has very clearly says that you have to cooperate with the people in the human resource management with all the human beings, with all the human beings, with ta'abunu ilal birre wa taqwa wa la ta'abunu alal isme wal uduan. So you have to make cooperation with each and every human be being in the, during your human resource management or the manager, managerial post or managerial business within the domain of the ethical moral fabric which has been uh, given by Islam. Then the next moral value is this very very much important for me and for all of us who are in the field of human resource management of any kind is forgiveness generosity hard work no no nation no company no no organization can can pros, pros, uh, prosper or cannot cannot be developed can go further without the hard a small company hard work is very important which has been asked many times in quran that a Muslim male and female should work hard in this world. And many verses of Quran are coming to my mind, but why I don't have time to, to say or to read all those. So hard work is also been prescribed by Quran or for the Islamic the moral values for the Islamic human resource management. Justice and fairness is the next important moral value. And the next is uh, 
moderation. We should have moderation in each and every human activity in our life. Next is modesty and chastity. We should not forget the modesty and chastity in during our management of, 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 of the people. Persistence, prosperity of the nation, wherever we are working, we should work for the nation, for their prosperity, for the society, for the company. Reconciliation is also a very important point for Islamic human resource management and reliance responsibility, self-defense, supplication, and trustworthiness. Supplication is not the part of the contemporary human resource management, but supplication is, very, is also a very important moral value, ethical value for Islamic human resource management. Supplication means dua. We don't have this concept in other contemporary human resource management, but in Islamic human resource management, whatever we do during our work, we should do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the for the ajar or the reward of the hereafter also and also do the supplication for the to for gaining the support for asking the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the trustworthiness is the last point in this slide trust if you don't trust the people we will not be able to to create an islamic the the atmosphere of islamic human resource management next slide please Now we come to the con conclusion. Uh, what I have all uh, given in all the previous uh, slides, I will try to revamp the conclusion of these things. My conclusion of this uh, lecture or my reading of the last, or my understanding of the last 50 years of my life, reading and understanding the human societies and all this, the point which I want to elaborate to my brothers and sisters who are with me now, is that we need as a Muslim world or a Muslim ummah to revamp the contemporary human resource management to Islamic human resource management. What I mean to say is that it do, we don't want to, to clean, we don't want to delete, we don't want to make it redundant, the contemporary human resource management, but we want to revamp means we, we cannot remove, we are, we are, we are, uh, not in the situation or in this strength to remove those things and to create our own Islamic human resource management. But we have to be, take a wise decision to revamping means to reorganize very slowly with hikmah, with wisdom, the Islam, the perspective of very slowly Udu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah wal mu'izatil hasana. We have to create an, uh, an atmosphere or a per new paradigm for Islamic human resource management. Bullet number two is we have to manage with ethics and social responsibility, responsibility to create an Islamic an atmosphere of Islamic human resource management. Uh, in other words, for bullet number three, we will have to substitute, as I said earlier, we have to change, we have to substitute, we have to bring a new system, substitute the secular materialistic concept of by Islamic concept, but not, not by force, but not by force, by power or by, by hook or by crook, but we have to go through by hikmah, with, with akhlaq, with respect, by logical explanations, not by hook and crook, I'm repeating again, not by hook and crook, not by dirty, plays or dirty, dirty games, but with 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 uh, logical explanation in a proper way, in a proper manner, in a in a in a in a academic manner to the people to understand and to very slowly create the concept of Islamic human resource management. Next bullet is we have to make, we have to produce, we have to build Islamic infrastructure to to replace already entrenched secular system, which I've already said. Entrenched means this secular system is already the part of each and every part of the world. We cannot remove this. The secular, the contemporary secular system, the word entrenched means it is in the roots of the, the whole world, the whole, all of the, the system which we have. This is in the roots of we, it's very difficult. Let me very be clear, very be honest to you. It is in the roots of each and every system in the contemporary world. So we will have to very 
are very cautious in this and we have to build but all again and repeat i'll repeat again and again needs hikma and and peace and and sabr and all this despite the next bullet is despite the fact that the muslims are in a very tight spot in a difficult situation to deliver solutions for many of the challenges they can still play a vital role in maintaining peace and harmony in the world by demonstrating i will repeat again by demonstrating wise actions i am repeating again by demonstrating demonstrating means by the behavior wise actions and strategies next last bullet is solutions can be explored understood and secured within creative and scientific principles constructed by on the fundamentals of islam and the last thing which i want to to present to, to all brothers and sisters is uh, the the holy verse of quran and that is uh, uh, of surah ar-raad which everybody knows very well in allah bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim in allah la yughayyiru ma bi qaumin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim the translation is allah will never change the condition of the people until and unless they will try to change their destiny or their own condition by themselves so this is the decision of quran very clear to me and to all of the people who are here and to all those brothers and sisters who are listening it is the responsibility of all of us to to propagate in whatever place whatever way with hikma to the world that we have got a very uh, compatible system of islamic human resource management which can be which is feasible and which is suitable for all of the world and the humanity it is suitable for all the world and all the human kind i once again at the last thank professor ehsan malik and his team for giving me this opportunity and all the brothers and sisters thank you very much wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah uh thank you very much uh, dr mohammad junaid nadwi sahab for this uh, nice presentation uh, now the floor is open for the participants uh, if you have any comment you want to add anything you have any question uh, please raise your hand and i will allow you to uh, to contribute uh, yes please any one of you uh i i see sheikh uh, najjar saying something uh yes let me uh, unmute you right lovely smith yeah nice start brother dr abdul malik I think Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I just want to compliment Doctor for a wonderful uh, presentation, Wallahi. And it reminds me of two things, where where Doctor is mentioning about everything is there in Islam which we must just deliver, and that ayat confirms exactly where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala speaks. Ma farratna fil kitabi min shay. We did not leave anything out of this book, the Quran. So exactly what Doctor is saying, endorsing that that everything is found there. We just have to pick it up and deliver it. And in the same time, I want to compliment Doctor in explaining the word Khalifa. Uh, I think from that angle, once we understand that that we each and every one of us is this viceroy that must carry out what Allah wants from us. And I think I must compliment uh, the Doctor, the Professor. for a wonderful presentation really he enriches us and may allah bless you brother abdul malik and the professor for the wonderful work you are doing inshallah and islam will prosper with the will of allah subhanahu wa taala i thank you uh, thank you very much sheikh uh, uh, i would like to request brother suhail uh, it appears that uh, we our interaction Uh, has not been so frequent, brother. You forgot my name, ah, eh? <laughs> San Mali. San Mali, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Inshallah. So, uh, yes, brother Suhail, please unmute yourself. Uh, 
Uh, yes, Brother Suhail is not active. Uh, Brother Hassan Al Hussain from Uganda, please unmute yourself. Now, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, I'm Hassan Al Hussain from Uganda. I want to take this opportunity to thank Dr. for the great presentation which he has given to us. I personally have learned a lot and I wish if my team was with me, would have learned something which will help us how to run our community, how to learn, how to run our Islam. But inshallah ta'ala, what I've learned here, I'm going to share it with them. Though my concern to doctor is, is it possible to share with us the slides so that we can be equipped well while we are also reaching it to our fellow brothers who were not able to attend this lecture. Thank you very much. Yes, Dr. Saab, uh, I don't think uh, that Dr. Saab will not allow it and uh, uh, we, we take the freedom of uh, uh, announcing that yes, we will uh, share this uh, the, the slides with all of you and Dr. Saab will have no objection, inshallah. Yes, sir. Yes, any, uh, the next one is from uh, Sheikh Zishan Yaqub. Please unmute yourself. Um, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to Dr. J uh, Nadvi Saab. They are delivering a great lecture at here. Uh, I want to know about, uh, meanwhile, they are uh, uh, some like uh, example, giving the example about uh, some HRM person who is also the, having the uh, Islamic perspective as well. So I want to know that uh, who is that person? What was their uh, main meanwhile main working in the field of HRM. And secondly, uh, as a researcher, I would uh, like to know that may we uh, continue our research on these uh, meanwhile new perspective of HRM as an Islamic perspective of HRM. Is it? Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir. Ji, Dr. Saab, you got the point. Uh, yes, uh, uh, yes, I got uh, not the the question was not very much clear for me. I uh, see. Um, uh, I think what I understood, uh, Professor uh, Ehsan Malik Sahab, uh, what I understood that the brother is asking for the material or the the sources. Am I correct? Uh, wait, give me a minute. I. Uh, let me ask the brother to repeat because uh, I, I also was trying to upload the file and I was not uh, listening properly. G okay, G okay, okay, okay. I, I will answer him in a very brief uh, uh, sentence. And that is, uh, I am all, an always open and to, uh, and we all, uh, with the help of Professor uh, Ehsan Malik and Professor uh, Shahid Rafi Saab, who is the, our chairman, uh, we are always open to any kind of help to all of our, our brothers and sisters all over the world. Anytime you need any kind of uh, assistance, I will be glad to do this as my religious obligation. So uh, please do not hesitate to contact Professor um, Ehsan Marik uh, for my email and all that. I'll give you the references and the resources and all of my things. Very briefly, in one sentence, you can go to all of my uh, research papers, most of them, and uh, I have also written a re a recently a research paper for Malaysia, uh, Malaysian Journal, which is uh, online now. Uh, I'll give you all of my, my books and all those things are, uh, are available free of cost, free of, for download on uh, academia.com. If you go to academia.com and put my name there, you will find all my publications, books and research papers, especially on Islamic human resource management, which are for free for download. But even though if you don't find those, please ask, request Professor uh, Ehsan Malik. Uh, we both will help you and provide all whatever you need for your PhD or, or forever, what things you want. It will be a pleasure for me. 
Yes, inshallah, uh, uh, For all the participants who are with us today, uh, we are not in a single group and I don't have data of who is attending today. So if uh, there is any request like this, so please communicate with me uh, individually, personally, and I will uh, assist. I will be able to assist you. Uh, we have a question from uh, Brother Sohail and he's saying, uh, what he's saying, how to implement IRHM in Muslim society. Brother Suhail is raising his hand. He was unable to ask himself. He has written it uh, uh, in the chat box, how to implement IHRM in Muslim society. Yeah, thank you very much for this very wonderful and very important and very uh, good question. And that is how to implement this is what I have tried to explain in my slides. We, my dear brother and sisters, the implementation of Islamic human resource management cannot be done by hook or by crook, as I said twice in my lecture. The only way is to go for this by hikmah, by wisdom, and the only way to, to bring this Islamic human resource management, if you are working in a company, by your ethical moral behavior, and if you are working, working as an individual in a society or in a, in a nation or in a country, for example, Pakistan, for example, until and unless you, you do not change the political system of a country or a nation, take the example of Pakistan, until and unless the people who are controlling the political system or the political authority, the, if these people are not the pious people or not those people who are totally in, in uh, compatible with the Islamic ethical moral values, if they don't want to implement anything, they don't want to make any policy, it is unable to implement the Islamic human resource management. Let me give you an example of Pakistan, for the recent example uh, of Pakistan. I will not give you the names, but I'll give you the example. There are many of the new decisions given, taken by in the, in the past six months, uh, we see uh, from, uh, from the economic point of view, uh, from the social point of view, uh, from the religious point, last week, from the religious point of view, um, and many other points of view from the religious, social, and economic, and political. All these four decisions which I have been taking in Pakistan in the past six months or in the past few years, uh, are an example that which which means which which show that the control of all any kind of of uh, implementation of from the Islamic perspective is totally in the control of the people who are controlling the Islamic uh, political system. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, the next question will be from uh, Mehfish Sawa. Please unmute yourself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I have a question. That if we talk about uh, Islamic human resource management, there are some uh, Islamic organizations claiming that they are implementing uh, this management system, but they use people only for what are uh, giving their organization benefits. Uh, but on the other hand, people's right, uh, those that are working with them are being violated in the name of Islamization. And uh, the growth of the people are being restricted uh, if it is in the benefit of uh, organization's growth. So, um, and they justify it as Islamic human resource management. Please uh, guide me that, are they using uh, the right Islamic human, uh, uh, like HR management system? Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, my dear sister. A very good question again. The answer is the same which I have already given, and you have also answered my uh, your question in your own uh, 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 talk or your uh, your uh, uh, is very simple that uh, we have to to see what is our capacity 
and domain if i am working and you are working in a in a in an uh, in an organization or in an environment we can do whatever we can uh, to our own capacity we should not go beyond the limits of from the ethical and moral uh, 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 values so whatever is permissible or to whatever way we can go forward to implement very slowly uh, step by step to put our the philosophy our philosophy means the islamic philosophy of which i have already explained then we can only succeed in this um, this uh, difficult task now with the word i which i have used is uh, uh, i am repeating again we are talking about the islamic human resource management as i said earlier in my slides and in my previous talk it is one of the most difficult task apart from other task to bring the islamic human resource management into implement into implementation it is uh, without any doubt a very difficult task to go ahead but we, we we should have to we should do it and we we must do it and we should strive hard for to this and inshallah if we are successful to achieve or if we don't we are unsuccessful in both ways we will be having our reward my reward and your reward will be with allah subhanahu wa taala even if i and you success uh, go for success or if we are unsuccessful uh the sister is raising her hand and again let me ask her if she want to add anything um, so i have another question that is it allowed for a person to challenge the controlling authorities if they are doing um, uh, in the name of islamic human resource management system something other than uh, the system allow us to do and thank you very much sister thank you very much again a very good question is coming yes you can and yes you cannot both answers are there yes you can means if you are your if you are my one of my employees take the example that you are my sister but not my sister at the moment you are one of my employees at the time of your appointment i gave you or my company gave you an appointment letter or a contract in which your duties and obligations and your rights are very clearly mentioned like in the european contracts and most of the good companies they have the contract in which the the ethical moral and all the principle in the banks for example so if it is allowed in the contract that that you should give your uh, make any objection if this is written in your contract then you should go ahead with that in a very polite manner but if the word if it is written in your contract that we you a good suggestion will be uh, will be uh, will be welcomed in the contract although it is, i have never seen in my life in pakistan but in european uh, contracts i have seen they always welcome i have been working in the in the europe in in other countries european countries in the past year and also in other parts of the world they sometimes they they acknowledge and they give you this right in the contract but unfortunately we don't have this kind of an opportunity in um, the 57 muslim countries which i have been and not been all the countries but i have seen some of the contracts we don't find this uh, law or this uh, clue in that so uh, you have to be very careful in that if it is now i'm closing this answer that if you if it is not written it is not allowed in the, your contract you have no right to to inter intercept or to make any argument with the management but the only thing is that you can talk with the people in a good manner in a in a in a manner of chatting or in a in a mat, manner of nasiha otherwise you have no right uh, to go to the court or to put any uh, legal or put in in writing because it is not the part of your contract because if you will write and if you will raise anything the only thing which will come from the management side or from the management office will be that you are being terminated for the period of 15 days salary or for the 30 days salary Yeah, the next question is from uh, Rana Idrisa from Johannesburg. Please, Rana Sabi, unmute yourself. The Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, can you listen? Yes, sir. I, yes, we are. We are. 
جزاک اللہ خیر دس از رانا ادریس فرام جوہانس برگ ساؤتھ افریقہ آئی ایم لیونگ ہیئر فار لانگ جزاک اللہ خیر فار یور بیوٹیفل لیکچر اینڈ دا لیڈنگس واٹ وی نیڈ ٹو ڈو آئی نیڈ ٹو جسٹ لیبوریٹ اے پوائنٹ ایز دا سسٹر آس کین وی انٹر فیئر ان دا ڈیلنگس آف اتھارٹیز one ayah coming in my mind wa makar allah wa makar allah wa allah khairul makirin allah is the best planner definitely he shows the signs and he shows the circumstances as human being needed in uh, lockdown i think it was in 2020 2020 or 2021 when the complete lockdown was in south africa nobody can go out and nobody can do anything outside alcohol was banned uh, there was no traffic on roads as the alcohol was banned more or less i think about 80% of gender based violence was declined and same way around 90% road accidents was declined so that purely shows that what the alcohol can affect on the society everyone knows that it came in the statistics and it came into the authorities knowledge this is the reason how we can control these things as soon as lockdown been normalized and then the alcohol was allowed and the same uh, uh, statistics statistics came back gender based violence was there road accidents was there so that means we we experience the problem and we we was not in the position that we can say okay keep it banned and do not allow to the people to do such things because this is the uh, main problem of society but nobody listens in this circumstances what we need to do as as i'm sure in your slide you gave us so many points like uh, uh, let me just okay okay i i got your point brother brother idris thank you very much god bless you god bless you thank you very much jazakallah uh, excellent excellent question uh, all the questions are very are great which shows that uh, the lecture has gone well now i'll answer uh, the question of uh, brother uh, professor rana idris from johannesburg and the sister and all other brothers and sisters they all have the same question which uh, mr rana or brother rana has the answer to this is very simple i'll try to put in point in points 1 2 3 4 for example you can tackle or you can deal or you can attempt or you can have this issue and the example which you gave for example uh, i don't know what 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 do you do or what is your profession and occupation but if you are the the member of the parliament of johannesburg number one the first responsibility on you comes you have to put a bill uh, in a very polite manner explaining all what you have explained to this audience if you are the member of the parliament or for the body or the or the baladia or the whatever authority you have the community you have uh the second thing if you are a businessman you are a teacher you are a uh, dai or you are a propagator or you are a ma- imam masjid or you are a professor or you are an ordinary man I mean what whatever capacity you are if you are the speaker of the mosque or whatever capacity you are you are a community leader if you are you should arrange a seminar and explain what you have explained to me and to this audience as an example and give us them the solution that if we do 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 this 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 we can make our society more peaceful more beneficial and more secure secure from other uh, social and economic and political evils and the last point is if you are not not in the capacity of all these things the last but not the least you can do you can write write a small uh, article or a paper research paper on an article in whatever language you write in urdu in english in your uh, language of, of johannesburg whatever language you are write a small article in a good manner show it to uh, to to in urdu show it to professor uh, uh, ismail uh, professor uh, 
एक एहसान मालिक और एनी बडी और प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर हु आर वेरी गुड इन उर्दू शाहिद रफी साहब स्मॉल आर्टिकल राइट अ स्मॉल आर्टिकल विद द सेम टॉपिक व्हिच यू हैव मेंशन हाउ टू डू दिस 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 एट द सेम इन अ ब्यूटीफुल मैनर नॉट बाय स्कोल्डिंग द पीपल नॉट स्कोल्डिंग मींस नॉट बाय गिविंग द फतवा ऑफ हराम एंड दिस इज हराम दे विल गो टू जहन्नम एंड नो नॉट ऑफ नॉट ऑफ दिस ऑल दिस रबिश लैंग्वेज यूज अ पोलाइट लैंग्वेज इन योर राइटिंग राइट एंड अ ब्यूटीफुल आर्टिकल and how to revive how to how to repair this the society by giving the example of covid and in the parliament in the newspapers of pakistan whenever you wherever you want or in, on the internet this is the last thing which you can do otherwise the thing which i have mentioned if you are in the the member of the parliament or any local body you can start your work from there Uh, thank you very much, Doctor, for this explanation. Uh, we have some question from uh, Sister Halima, Ustaza Halima. Uh, if I am not wrong, I think she is from Singapore. Uh, she has sent uh, some questions in uh, written form. Uh, she is asking, how has uh, IH, uh, IRHM recognized the right of Muslim women uh, Work in Muslim majority countries, and the same question. Then she is asking, how can IHRM advise on modesty standard for Muslim women working as Muslim minorities? So um, she is asking about Muslim countries and then Muslim minorities, and she has sent another one. How can IHRM enhance the functions of migrant workers union in respective countries? Uh, so uh, some of her questions are from minority and. Uh, Singaporean uh, uh, perception. So please, Dr. Sab, if you can elaborate on this. Thank you very much, uh, sister from Singapore, and all the brothers and sisters and professor Hassan Malik Sahab. Uh, the answer number one is the examples. I can you give you the example that Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin by the blessings of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and by the efforts of the people. like this organization of uh, uh, center for peace and many other organization the examples of islamic human resource management which i have seen in europe myself in most of the countries in european union five or six countries in in france and in and in european countries in uk and in other so this concept of islamic human resource management is being alhamdulillah is being implemented in the ngos and organizations in european some of the european countries in budapest in hungary in france in paris in belgium and in many other countries in and and especially which i have seen myself in malaysia also uh, and in also in and in uh, in kuwait and in saudi arabia and in in sudan and in uh, in egypt so we have these examples in many of the muslim countries which are in a very which are not highlighted they don't want to be highlighted or some people don't want want them to be to be highlighted in more, any other case so these examples can be seen but the most prominent example which i have seen is of malaysia nowadays and in some of the islamic foundation uk and islamic foundation uh, usa and many other organization which i have seen myself Uh, they have they are Im implementing this uh, concept of a modesty and islamic human resource management the second part of the question is uh, about how to work in a uh, in a in ngos and societies uh, i gave a lecture about uh, about a year back in in uh, hungary in budapest uh, to an uh, in uh, the us uh, embassy uh, consulate on this community on such kind of issues uh to the community in which very few muslims were there i i gave in my lecture the the idea or the uh support or the problems of the muslims communities in europe and especially in budapest and hungary and all those organizations so working in the ngos is having to be a delicate work but the same um, thing can be done here that if you can work and you can make the change you can bring the change if it is allowed in the rules and regulations of that organization you can make very brief 
and very soft change and you can bring the change uh, if the rules and regulation of that country of that organization allow you to do this otherwise you have no right according to your contract or your passport or whatever you place you are or your nationality your contract or your uh, immigration whatever you place you are if the laws immigration laws the contract is is not allowing you to interfere in this any kind of activity you are not allowed to do this until and unless it is legally allowed by the organization or by the country in which you are living in uh thank you very much uh, let me see we had uh, dr fakhrul islam here i am no longer there uh, any other question any other comment uh, some of the participants they were asking about any uh, good literature any good book uh, on the topic if you can recommend any if they are uh, available yes there are i will send you the the books i i find give you the links and inshallah i'll give you send you the books to to you uh, professor um, sahib thank you that's all uh, let me repeat again, uh, brothers. If you need uh, uh, any material, you you will contact me, and I will forward it to you. Uh, we will not be sharing. Uh, we have many groups, so uh, I don't know uh, the, about the participants of today's session. So I will only share with the brothers who are attending today. So please uh, contact us for, uh, either through email or any way. So we will uh, forward it to you after getting it from Dr. Junaid Nadvi Sahib, inshallah. Uh, if there is no uh, other question or comment, uh, I would uh, like to request Dr. Muhammad Shahid Rafi Sahib ko mein adar khas karunga. Dr. Sahib, Junaid Nadvi Sahib already introduced you that uh, of your skills in Urdu language. So, I will also ask you that you will give Dr. Sahib ka shukriya da karein aur unka aakhri kalimat ke liye tashrif lai. Dr. Shahid Rafi Sahib, please unmute yourself. Dr. Shahid Rafi Sahib is General Secretary of Center for Peace and Global Studies. Ji, Dr. Sahib. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Dr. Junaid Nadvi and Dr. Ehsan Malik both have been given to me on my Urdu language. That's why I have been given to me in Urdu. کہ ہم انتہائی شکر گزار ہیں تمام پارٹیسپینٹس کے جنہوں نے آج کے اس پوہ میں شرکت کی اور بڑی ذاتی دلچسپی لی ہر ایک نے اور بالخصوص ڈاکٹر جنید ندوی صاحب نے ایک ایسے موضوع پر جس کو ہم ایک جدید موضوع اور جدید علم سمجھتے ہیں اور بالعموم لوگوں کے ذہن میں ایک تصور یہ ہے کہ جو اسلامی علوم ہیں وہ شاید کوئی قدیم علوم ہیں اور جو اس نوعیت کے علوم ہے وہ جدید علوم ہیں تو جبکہ حقیقت یہی ہے جس کا اظہار بڑے واضح اور مدلل انداز میں ڈاکٹر جنید ندوی نے کیا کہ اسلام اور اس کی تعلیمات ہر شعبے کے لیے اور ہر دور کے لیے مفید بھی ہیں اور کارگر بھی ہیں اور اس پر انتہائی خوبصورت انداز میں ڈاکٹر جنید ندوی صاحب نے اظہار خیال کیا اور سوالوں کے جواب دیئے سوالات بھی بہت ہی ریلیونٹ اور موضوع سے متعلق تھے جس سے تمام خواتین و حضرات کی اس میں دلچسپی کا اظہار ہوتا ہے تو ان پروگاموں میں جو سنٹر فور پیس اور گلوبل سٹڈیز کی جانب سے یہ کیے جا رہے ہیں ہر مہینے کے آخری سٹرڈے کو یہ پروگام کیا جاتا ہے تو اس میں آپ حضرات کی شرکت ہمارے لیے حوصلہ افضائی کا سبب بنتی ہے ہم ایک بار پھر ڈاکٹر جنید ندوی صاحب جناب احسان مالک صاحب اور تمام شرکاء کا بہت شکریہ دا کرتے ہیں کہ اس پروگرام میں بڑے تسلسل کے ساتھ وہ حصہ لیتے ہیں اور انشاءاللہ آئندہ بھی اس سلسلہ امید ہے کہ جاری رہے گا جزاکم اللہ والسلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ تینکیو بری مچ ڈاکٹر صاحب Uh, one of our activities, one of our objectives of Center for Peace and Global Study is to develop textbooks on uh, different topics uh, like uh, the one that we have covered today. 
so uh, it's in our scope and we we are looking forward to scholars to uh, researchers who can contribute in uh, on such topics uh, such uh, modern subjects uh, that are being taught at university level and they can produce uh, books or textbooks from Islamic perspective. So you are welcome. You can write to us to Center for Peace and Global Studies and we uh, may consider supporting you. Uh, thank you very much all the participants and Dr. Muhammad Junid Nadi for joining us today. Uh, we will have our next session next to be in next month, last Saturday at the same time, inshallah. So in case you are not getting any invitation, you can come and join uh, or you can contact us uh, for any information. Uh, we, in Pakistan, we have two months uh, <clears throat> summer vacation now and we will have, be having some more activities during the, this time, maybe some summer camps or uh, some uh, workshop. So please uh, keep in touch and inshallah, we hope that you will participate in our activities. Jazakumullah khair, thank you very much. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته